Good evening and welcome back to The Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly D&D 5th edition actual play campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Donatis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Wrath, the Azamar warlock. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're looking for more content for 5th edition and other TTRPGs, be sure to check out our YouTube channel as well. H head up over there where you can find our latest videos, including gu guides for players and guides for dungeon masters as well. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. And with that, let's get rolling. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all. The fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they had gone their separate ways. Whilst Veo and Paluto travel back to Drakenheim to seek out the means to return the fallen Sebastian Crow to the realm of the living, Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath have returned to the village of Tierhaven, where their adventures began, deep within the Ochtenwald Forest. There, they are pursuing the apothecaries of Ochtenwald University, those responsible for the death of Sebastian, and who are conspiring great and evil things with their occult magic. Worse still, Rudy's son, Corbin, has fallen in with these apothecaries, and what they're doing with him and what he is up to with them is completely unknown. So our heroes are in pursuit, following only some rumors because they don't know yet where the apothecaries have gone in the massive Ochtenwald, which is a gigantic forest, one of the largest on the continent, which spans the massive middle of Westamar itself. So there is a huge area to search, but Tierhaven, lying close to the heart of the forest, is a great place to check because it would be the last place these apothecaries would have had a ch chance to resupply if they were traveling by, by roads. You've traveled several days through the Ochtenwald from Altbrook, and having now reached Tierhaven towards the end of the day, the Village of Tierhaven is a welcome and nostalgic site for all of you who lived here for several years. Nestled deep within the forest, Tierhaven is built along a single dusty road that passes under a rocky crag. High atop the cliffs is a tall stone observatory which peers out over the forest below, its topmost spire set with a curious arcane lens. The town consists of several cottages of mud and brick and thatched rooftops with a few buildings of stone. There is a humble domed chapel of the sacred fire and a pair of competing public houses on either end of town. A simple trading post and marketplace springs up around the well that is at the center of town, but there's not any real shops in Tierhaven or even a proper inn. Travelers will usually have to just trade with the locals or see and usually the, those who run the public houses will offer a spare bed or something in their own homes. Most visitors that come to Tierhaven usually are um, homesteaders um, ma making it, trying to make it in the forests on smaller forest farms or orchards that they bring their crops uh, and their harvests to the, the mills or the marketplace. Um, 
A common sound in Tierhaven used to be the blacksmith spending his days making nails and horseshoes, but he closed up shop a few months ago to move away with his family. And so the, the blacksmith has been quiet for some time. The, the smith's shop itself uh, closed, closed up. It's bittersweet coming home right now. I know, you know, I gesture, say my family, at least I know hopefully that they're safe and that uh, we can figure out what's going on here. Hmm. Where would you travel to first in Tierhaven? The, there's the observatory, the tap houses, the chapel, your home. Uh, I mean, home might be good to see if there's any. I know they haven't been there a bit, but stock up and and see. But maybe they left a note. Well, I'd like to see the old barn. All right, I'll just see That's if make home. sure there's That's no one broken home. into my home while while they've been gone. What does Rudy's home look like? Um, so it's very log cabin like because we made it from the the surrounding forest virtually all the locals of Tierhaven either they built their homes themselves or the previous generation did yeah, yeah. we've definitely helped build a house or two uh, in Tierhaven but I imagine it to be um, almost like a main building with lots of kind of offshoots of random rooms. As Rudy's family has grown, you can mm -hmm. see the pieces that have randomly been built to support her growing family with a barn off to the side that has been there since they built the main house. Is the home one or two levels? I would say the main one is one, and then you get these offshoots of like yeah. rooms that have stairs in them that get built up. So it's kind of a mishmash of main one stories with a random two story pieces on it. Now is Rudy expecting to see any of her, her older children still in, in in here or do you expect that most of your family would have gone uh, to the Vale where they're safer? I mean the ask was that everybody clear out okay. but Ari and Lycus do have their own kind of homesteads off. Um, where they have their own lives, like not too far from Tierhaven, but whether they cleared out their own houses is, was up to okay. them. You approach your home and the scene is quiet. The gardens are overgrown <laughs> and you can see the cobwebs that are choking the windows as, as well. Uh, an old wagon left in the yard uh, is very much rusted over, um, and the house is probably the quietest it has ever, that you've ever experienced it. Mm. <sighs> well, this is the only thing I can ask for is that they are off somewhere safe, so as much as it hurts to not hear anybody here. And as I'm doing this, like I'm going up and I'm prestidigitating almost by habit the cobwebs on the windows. Okay. As you approach the home, the front door has been left slightly ajar. Maybe they left in a hurry? That's not like any of them, though, to leave the door open. Obi wouldn't leave it unlocked. If he did, he's very forgetful of him, but knowing he was leaving, he would lock the door. Hmm. Perhaps one of your elder children came by and I don't know, maybe we should be cautious. Hmm. Also, I mean, if no one's been in here for a bit, who knows who's come across. So yeah, we best be cautious. And I kind of take out my ax. I unsheath my sword. Hmm. As you open the door to the house, the smell of rotted food hits your nostrils right away. The main room of your home is a large open room with a great stone hearth upon it. The There is an a rod that stretches across it, two rods, one that you would use to uh, do a roast on, and another for this big cauldron. And I, I assume that in the Whitaker house, this fire was never not lit. 
So as you step into the room, just the sight of the fire not being that warmth that lights the home, um, I, I, I almost imagine that you might even have yelled at some of your children or, or scolded them pro for not chopping the firewood and making sure that it's fully stocked up and maybe the memories of explaining to your children why you keep the fire going mm -hmm. at all times come, f floods over you and it's, it's out. Mm -hmm. um, the old scorch marks kind of running up, up the chimney. Um, there is the rotted carcass of a quail roast on the spit and a very, very rancid stew mm. in the cauldron. Before the hearth, I sort of imagine, and, and you can you can adjust me adjust this if I'm wrong. I imagine that the Whitakers might have had some big this haphazard collection of chairs to sit on. Oh yeah, around the hearth, and and perhaps a big round table that the entire family. Could sit around, but I also imagine it's a, it would be an affair that during family gatherings you'd have to bring out another chair, and there'd be like the kids' chair, the adults' chair, and, and everything. But that this main room of the house is something that the whole family could gather gather here, mm -hmm. and then the hearth would be where the big centerpiece of the meal would be cooked. But then there's another cooking area with a smaller oven and other 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 things that also helps to keep the the home heated. And then from there the doors go off to the other bedrooms. And I imagine that there'd probably be like an outhouse out back. Yeah. Um, and so really for, for the Whitaker home, it's kind of like this big long room with all these adjacent rooms that are that are bolted on, on, onto it. Mm -hmm. And it's a mess. It is not in the state that you left it in. Mm -hmm. um, there are tracks of mud across the floor um, and there are scraps of paper strewn all, all, all about. The chairs are all out, out of order. It looks like someone very lazily um, pulled apart one of the family chairs to keep the fire going instead of chopping wood. And, um, and the pantries have been raided. What what you would have kept in long-term storage, obviously the family probably would have taken before. Um, and well, many of your family's personal effects, they would have traveled away with, so that you can assume that they're probably safe. The furnishings that have been left behind here have been very clearly used and not respectfully. Mm. I um, almost angrily start like putting some of the chairs back and like prestigitating some of the mud and I'm like, that's what happens when you leave your home in the middle of nowhere and nobody's looking after your place and I'm just like straightening things and I'm like, the amount I give to people as they come through here and, and give them a space and a home and this is how they treat my place. <sighs> Picking up on Rudy's tone, Wilhelm falls back into old habits and without saying anything immediately starts cleaning. And uh, it's just like wiping mud off the floor and putting things back where they go. And the, he doesn't say a word. He just, he's, he, li this is, this was his home as well for uh, nine years, I think. What does your chair look like? So, okay. So out of all the chairs, there's a very, very mundane stool. And I, I go over to it and I kind of place my hand on it. And then it falls over because one of the legs has been taken off and used in the fire. And, oh, my stool. <laughs> Oh. Wrath, what about you? Um, I, you know, I, I've, I've been in sort of houses like this before in the state, and I'm gonna, I get the sense that there might be someone here. So I'm gonna act on my suspicions and begin to investigate the rest of the house. Okay. Would you like to start, other areas that you could lo look at would be the kitchen and the pantry or the bedrooms. Help me out here, Rudy. How many bedrooms <laughs> are there in your home? <laughs> who doubles up, who bunk That's beds, true, who, yeah. Who, I would yeah. say probably there was um, one, two. Do the grandkids three. live here as well? Um, 
what one of them. See, I feel like though the thing is is that even if they didn't live here, I feel like Rudy's house was built that the whole family could come here and oh, yeah. stay. For sure. Yeah. Right. You could so, have some tent beds, right? Yeah. Like, I definitely think that there's at least one room that has a bunch of bunk beds in it. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, because yeah. they grew up and so like even so my first two kids were Ari and Lankus and they were twins, so they actually shared a room. They didn't get their okay. own room. So I would say like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Probably ten rooms. Okay. Yeah. So I imagine that coming. Rooms. So I think that the house is almost T shaped in its mm -hmm. overall layout. So what sort of happened was there was the main longhouse, and then I imagine on one end of that longhouse is your bedroom mm -hmm. itself. But then shooting off of it like a like a T, you started to build this hall that just slowly got longer with all the rooms coming off of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and so just over time you can you can very clearly see as you walk along the hallway, you can be like it tells the story of like the family growing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and some of like the, the materials that we have maybe were different based on different yeah. seasons that we cut down. So like it's as much as the chairs are mis mismatched, like the house itself is yeah. kind of mismatched in the sense that like you see the personalities of people who lived here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So heading down the the hall. Yeah, heading to the bedrooms. He heading through through the bedrooms. I also want to try my new Eldritch invocation. Ooh. The Shroud of Shadow. Which does? I will become invisible. Okay. So invisibly, as you head down the halls. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Perfect. The most of the bedrooms in, in Rudy's home consist of a small room with a single bed that was that the finer kind of the furs and the bedding and everything. Some of the family took those with them, some of them were, were left behind. And in most rooms, there would be a chest of drawers, uh, and usually in most cases, a small stove of some kind to just keep each individual room warm. And as you go down the, the halls, one of the things that's, that lingers in the air is that smell of the the ash from the stoves which is a smell that tells you that the bedrooms were recently occupied because someone was sleeping in the beds and going through through the rooms some i don't know if you'd ever been to rudy's home or would, would know enough details rudy would be able to confirm this but rudy what you can confirm once you report this back to rudy is that there is Bedding that does not belong to the family has been left behind. Mm. And I am sure that as, as, as a mother, you know the bedding that is in your home. <laughs> yes, I do, I do. Yeah, and, and so there's basically some, some wool blankets um, have been left behind on several of the beds that don't, that don't correspond with anything. The, most of the rooms have also been left in a state of disarray. The only exception, and again, Rudy will confirm this when she, we look, she looks, is Corbin's bedroom is tidy and the door neatly shut. Hmm. I mean, he often kept his room quite nice, but strange that it's the only one. Looks like it could have been used recently, which would make sense if he was logically Rudy. Corbin is traveling with the apothecaries. Mm. This would have been their last stop before heading into the Octomalt. Mm -hmm. Corbin may have offered the house as a place for him and his entourage to stay before heading deeper into the Octomalt. Why try to find a place to sleep in everybody else's house when Corbin knew that there was a perfectly good home that he had access to here. I mean, I guess my question for him is why didn't he question that his family wasn't here? We don't know what Corbin is thinking right now, but... He may, 
he may be under duress or some kind of spell. He may be compelled uh, beyond his own will mm. to comply with the orders of the apothecaries. Mm. Well, he could have at least made up some of the other rooms for his <laughs> guests. I'm just saying, I, I did not raise a slob by any means. Ah, that might be true. I want to check out then, as we sort of deliberate over what might have happened here, I want to start to look for anything that might have been left behind beyond the uh, wool blankets. All right. As you continue that search, Wilhelm and Rudy, what are you doing? Now that I've angrily cleaned <laughs> some of Feeling a bit more. my house, I'm like, yeah. Okay, so I have a question for Rudy. At least in my family, there are some hidden nooks in the house mm. where we would leave important things or places where we would keep a secret key or a, a note or important things were extra cash left. maybe mm. what are some of those places in Rudy's house um so over the fireplace there's a ledge okay so there is a piece where if you kind of lift it up it kind of comes out and slides off so there's like a hidden drawer there um typically we keep yeah like overall I would say like a keys and and family goods that we would use like around Tear Haven. So could be things like a bit of extra gold or mm. silver. Um, could be things like, um, you know, tools that we don't want to go missing that we just specifically need to keep for the barn. And where would your family keep your valuables? Like if you had family savings or gold, because remember there's not a bank in Tear Haven, mm. right? And even though there isn't a lot of coinage that is exchanged in Tear Haven, you still probably have some. Where would your family keep that? Um, so in the kitchen, um, right kind of where I would say like, there's almost like a mat in front of what I would consider a basin or okay. some sort of sink. Yeah. Um, there's a piece of flooring that like comes up there. Um, and again, it's, it's not weird to have a mat in your kitchen. So when you pull that, mm -hmm. you kind of have a floorboard that lifts there. Like deeds, you could put like yeah, I imagine yeah, yeah, maybe like a a, a valuable statue. Yeah. Are there any other secret spots in the house? Uh, there is, um, yeah, definitely like another floorboard underneath my bed. And did your children have any place where they tried to hide things from you that you definitely <laughs> knew about? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes. It, honestly, like, I would say almost every room has, like, a bunk bed. Okay. And likely, like, if you go underneath the bunk beds, there's, like, spaces that they've hid or boxes they've, like, attached to the bottom of beds or, okay. um, you know, like, door, I wouldn't say door frames, but, like, definitely around uh, different areas of the rooms, there might be, yeah, like, floorboards and different places, and I'm like, I know all of the hidden places in, in my space. They may think they were clever in, in doing it, uh, but I can I can sniff out a secret in my household. Wait, did you know about mine? In the barn? No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Do I even need to? You didn't read I my know. journal, did you? I know all the secrets. I would not, just because I know it doesn't mean I would go and, and uh, Break our I swear it's nothing but nice things in there. But I knew about it. Okay. Well, it's on. It's on, over to you. Um, I'm gonna head out to the barn. Okay. I wanna, I wanna look at my old, <laughs> my old room. Secret stash. Um, I'm gonna first go to the the fireplace and like, see if, essentially like lift that one up and see if there's anything in there. Okay. Opening up the the fireplace, um, what you can very clearly see is that that nook, the important things that your family keeps there are gone. Mm. But that's not unreasonable. Abby probably would have taken everything that was there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
given, given the, the importance of those things. So when you, when you open it up, like you're like, you know that there's a couple keys to some of the chests mm -hmm. and that there were some extra tools that Avi kept, kept there. Um, and the, those things are all sort of empty, have been taken out, but like the mundane tools are, are still there. Mm, okay. Um, and then yeah, I'll go to the one in the, uh, in the bedroom actually. Okay. Yeah. Opening up the secret compartment that you have in your bedroom, this is where some very personal effects that you and your husband would have kept. Mm -hmm. And it has been very clearly opened, closed properly, and the things inside have been taken. Mm -hmm. And the best that you can hope is that that was <laughs> that, 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 that took it. Because again, it's reasonable that if Avi was leaving, this would be something that you, that you would take with you. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the one in the kitchen being the last one. Okay. Opening up the compartment in the kitchen, um, I assume that this is where you might have kept... What, what might you have kept here? Um, yeah, I mean, when I think about, like, yeah, essentially it's like the extra stash of cash that we would okay. have had. It would have been, like, almost like a lockbox or a chest or something okay. to do. When you open this one up, the lockbox is still there hmm. and it's still closed. And realizing this actually, the key for it was actually still in the drawer that you opened before. And again, knowing Obby is a very practical man. Um, and as you open up this lockbox, the keys for the blacksmith are in it. Hmm. And so probably his thinking was, I'm going to leave, and, and there's some emergency money mm -hmm. that is in here as well. A and there's a, there's, there's a note inside written by Avi saying, you know, hey, I'm leaving this behind. If anyone comes back and there's an emergency, you can take this money and do what you need to do with it. Okay. Right. And, and so it doesn't look like it's been disturbed. So, so, so far. All of your family's hidey holes look like the family has very much kept them intact. Okay. All right. Rath, there ain't, there ain't nothing in here. I'm not too worried about it, but seems like they cleared out in a hurry. Hmm. The only other hidey spots you haven't looked at are any of your children's, basically. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not too worried about If they wanted to take their stuff, they would. It would be, like, personal to them. Unless we check Corbin's. Yeah, as long as there's nothing like, you know, I'm gonna, you know, pull off some of the blankets off the beds just to make sure they didn't leave any like identifying. Sure, give me items. an investigation check. Um, anything that would sort of uh, indicate that they were who they were uh, or where they were going at uh, 13. Um, you go through the one of the bunk rooms with with from, that the children had, and several of them have some left behind some lock boxes that have some old candy in them, <laughs> um, and a little bit of their own allowance and personal treasures, uh, things that they might have made um, and, and left behind. But they haven't been disturbed, so the the children's things are are still still there. Um, did you want to look at Corbin's room? Yeah. Yeah, since this is the only one that's made up, I think it'd be best to look and see. Yeah, just if there's anything specific that might indicate that he's been here in a short amount of time. Okay. Looking around Corbin's room, you know that he kept... Because you knew that Corbin had magical talents, you knew that he kept a box of things that was sort of in a... Um, a brick in the wall that you could pull away mm -hmm. and then it was double hidden it was the brick that you pulled out but then you had to pull the bottom off the floor mm -hmm. as well to get to it when you open it up there is an envelope inside and in Corbin's handwriting it says to mom and it has been sealed with wax oh <laughs> that's probably doesn't mean anything <laughs> 
why? Why? If he was here recently, why would he? How did he know? Uh, I I walk back out into like the main room actually with it. Cool. Because I want to wait for Wilhelm to. Wilhelm, you head out to the barn. Opening the barn up, an acrid smell hits your nostrils. Several tables from the main house were moved out to the barn, and as well as a cauldron was set up in the barn. My barn. There are trappings and a few bits of broken glass, and clearly this cauldron was running. And the, well, the tables have been since cleared off. Many of them are stained with oddly discolored blotches. Uh, th- does this feel not like a cooking pot, but more like <laughs> this is an elk? They were using this for. Give me an investigation check. Alchemy. <laughs> or they were just really bad cooks. <laughs> I got a, a 13. Yeah, someone was doing alchemical work in here. My room smells terrible. I mean, this whole place isn't my room. I, I kept a little nook up above, but the, still, this, this is not what a barn is supposed to be used for. This smelled like hay. Now it smells like terrible alchemy. I'm not happy about this. Amateurs. Amateur alchemy. Amateur alchemy. Um, I'm... I'm gonna look around, like, at the pot. Um, is there anything left behind by the people that were, that were here, like, on the tables, or... What... Can I make sense of what is in the cauldron? Sure. Um, if you give me a... Arcana check... Yeah. <laughs> Eleven. It smells. <laughs> oh, why'd I do that? It smells like Lick it. burning. No, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not. No. <laughs> do that. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, best, best to leave it alone. Probably. Do not tinker with things beyond your comprehension. I say to myself. Um, I imagine in the barn. So the, the main barn has the strappings of a, of a normal barn, but there's a ladder that goes up to kind of a platform yeah. where, like, the circular window above would be. Um, and so I'm going to climb that ladder, and at the top where the platform is, that's where I imagine there's there's kind of a makeshift room. It's, it's open to yeah. the rest of the barn, but it has, like, a little single bed, a nightstand table with a candle on top, and um, that's about it. It... it looks relatively undisturbed, but looking out the window from the barn, give me a perception check. Just remembering my abilities. Remember, just... yeah, if it's less than 10, it becomes 10. Add your proficiency bonus. You can treat a d20 roll of 9 or lower as a 10. All right, so that's going to be a 15. Looking out the window, something becomes obvious to you that was not obvious walking into the house. Several heavy wagons with Horses were parked outside the house. Were? Or? Were. You can see the wagon trails mm. and the, and like the very, cl- because what you can tell is that the whole area of the house had become slightly overgrown. But what you can very see is that recently, perhaps as recently as a month ago, several heavy wagons parked here. They were pulled by draft horses and they were they stayed here for a little bit of time before moving on interesting um at this point i'm sort of looking at rudy we should not leave wilhelm alone he's constantly trying to be assassinated (laughs) i feel i feel like i'm failing (laughs) So I'm gonna go find Wilhelm just to make sure he's okay. Mm. Just to put yeah. my suspicions to rest. You're able to collect Wilhelm and bring him back to the house where the where by now Rudy um, 
I imagine, Rudy, you've lit the fire again mm -hmm. um, and are sitting in your chair with Corbin's letter. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know what this letter says, but I'm hoping it gives us some indication about what's going on here. It is obvious from outside. Uh, there, there were a number of wagons parked here, being drawn by horses. I think our suspicions are correct with the letter, the wagons. Mm -hmm. The whole group from uh, the uh, Altbrook were here. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you could maybe follow them into the forest? Could you follow many wagons that were horse-drawn? Wrath, rule number six. You know it. Follow the wagon. Yes, there's there's always a trail to follow. You were close. You're okay. getting there. Yeah, yeah. Rudy's been reading your diary, by the way. <laughs> I looked. <laughs> I, I looked, and it was still there. I didn't read it. Oh, good. No, I would never. Trust is the foundation for family. Thank you. All right. Why right. would you say that? <laughs> I want to read the letter. I'll open okay. It. And um, I think I want to read it over kind of silently first, but then depending on what it says, I'll read it out loud to everyone. Okay. I read Rudy's mind. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. You open the letter and it is dated. The letter is dated approximately for, uh, 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 for approximately six weeks ago, mm. which lines up with when, if the students from the university left and came here, lines up with around when they would have arrived in Tierhaven, if they had come from Alfred. Okay. It says, Dear Mom, I've been trying to find my own way, and I've been having a great time. I'm writing you this letter in case you come looking for me so that you know that I'm doing okay. I went to Ochtenwald University, and I've made some really great friends. And my professors are really amazing. He writes very trepidatiously. Some of them know magic, and they're teaching me so many things. I'm sorry about the mess in the house. We needed it. We're, we're on an expedition. We're exploring some of the magic that is here in the forest, and we needed a place to stay. My professors that I'm with are named Urian Muller and Lizanne Bean. Lizanne knows how to turn whatever material she finds into magic. She's got a little bit of an explosive personality. Urian Muller is a little bit too into the sacred flame, but he knows a lot about history and where things came from. We're going to investigate the great, the lair of the great dragon and see at which, according to legend, Professor Bean is very excited about all the chemi uh, chemical ingredients that might exist around the dragon's lair and in the, uh, and in the elven ruins. And Professor Muller is really interested in all the history there. I've come with them and soon, and I think with my magic, I might be able to use the observatory to help us figure out where the dragon's lair is. I'm really excited about, about all this. We might be in the forest for a couple weeks, but as soon as I get back, I'll let you know. Lots of love, Corbin. Well, at least it sounds like he's okay, and I really question a school that lets uh, young, younger kids go into a dragon's lair. As a parent, um, I'm gonna have to make a complaint <laughs> to this facility. Also, they should not be teaching them magic. 
They do not. They oh, are yeah, that not too. authorized. <laughs> that too. Uh, at all, Rudy. I, 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 I'd hate to play devil's advocate with the Corbin being okay thing, but this letter is dated six weeks ago, and he closes the letter off with, "We're going into the woods for a couple weeks." Mm. If he was okay, would he not have been back by now? Well, at least at that point, he was okay. So, it, it sounds like he's not. He's viewing it from an academic perspective, not a I'm power hungry and I want magic kind of perspective, you know? The legends of the dragon of the Octon Wall, the, the, this is this is not this this is one of the legendary dragons of, of the continent. It's I mean, there's rumors that Trathesi is still out there. Nobody's seen her in Nobody's seen them in a very long time, but mm. nobody's slain the dragon or or anything of that nature. There's 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 rumors, there's stories. I give me a history check, Will. It's going to be sixteen. Trithesia has emerged from the forest in the past and has actually attacked Altbrook and Shaftberg at various points in their their existence. Um, the forest dragon and their spawn are very dangerous creatures that dwell in the, the heart of the Octonwald. And the, the legend is that the dragon lives in a lair built in the ruins of an elven city that was located in the Octonwald. Well, I hope this group is not silly enough to go and actually poke this dragon, but that they are from a distance, being the academics that Corbin says they are. How long has Corbin been finding himself? I mean, the- When was the last time you had spoken with him directly? The last time we were here with the academy talking about what we were happening with the, the grandkids. Okay. He, he did speak to me about magic and I'll be honest, I should, I should have encouraged the Academy to talk to him, but we weren't sure at that point what was going on. And uh, I told him to, to keep quiet about it. I told him to stay steady and, and not to worry, but clearly he, he had, he needed to go find himself. He needed something more than just staying in Tearhaven. And I feel awful that I didn't address it at the time. This is not Corbin's fault. The persuasion of magic can be appealing. I know that <laughs> for a fact. And these apothecaries are snake oil salesmen. They, they speak of things they do not understand and they dabble confidently in a realm that they have no business being in. He is being misled. It is not his fault. I would rather get him the help from the academy, from wherever we can, but not through these apothecaries. If he wants to focus on learning magic, there's lots he can learn, but he shouldn't have to do it like I this. I have a great teacher. He should speak to Bruce. <laughs> Bruce is one and all sharing of his knowledge. We look for many disciples when the coming of Bruce. <laughs> Smile I think, I think, you know, we'll let him, you know, consider. I will give you this pamphlet that you can review. <laughs> and toss it into the fire. Thank you. I have many more. <laughs> um, have you heard of the great Bruce? <laughs> Um, we'll consider that. <laughs> Rudy's, if we're back in Tearhaven, mm -hmm. so the nostalgia of being an acting deputy is upon me, and I have to say, I think we have an investigation on our hands. That letter points out a few specifics. Mm. They went to Rath's observatory. Mm which coming back into town doesn't look like a windmill at all. I don't know why I thought it was a windmill all these years. Yes, it is. Uh... 
Not a windmill. No, I thought there that... is another windmill in town that is. <laughs> it's very hard to confuse them because they're very different buildings. I thought the maple. I did not. Li did you think I lived in a windmill? <laughs> yes. Absolutely, you were the weird windmill guy. You're the weird barn guy. Touche. <laughs> Listen, they used your observatory to track the dragon mm. and the Alvin ruins. I can follow the trail through the woods, but we can also use the observatory as well. If, if, if Corbin was able to use it mm. to find their way, then surely, Raph, that's your observatory. I you, am a master magician. You never told me that you could use the observatory to track magical energies. I just thought that that was your home. You never asked. <laughs> Yes, I avoided talking to you for many years, because yeah. you're strange. Yeah, and now that you're finally inquiring about some of my hobbies, yes, I can track magic things. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you like to show me? Sure. Cool. <laughs> yeah, very open to it. I love sharing knowledge. Here's another pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> Wrath, but uh, one thing I'm concerned about is uh, you probably have a lot of magic stuff in your observatory, correct? If they did gain access to the observatory, they may have found some academic supplies. This could be frustrating. I was hoping to use them for our journey. Mm. And when? Well, if we had ever come back, I did not plan on abandoning the tower. It is also the Academy's property. The, I, I, I cannot, I do not remember exactly what I left there, but there were definitely some probably chunks of delirium, even small, um, potions, magic scrolls, um, lots of gold, magic items, there's high level gear, notes about the the area when I was first tasked with coming to Tierhaven, I uh, I was studying the what we now know as uh, <laughs> I'm blanking the the purple glowing crystal delirium <laughs> delirium why have the they left my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, are you, are you okay? <laughs> to, to, Where's Bruce? To, to remind you, yes, the, the Octomold Observatory is a monitoring station that is built on the principle, as above, so below. So by observing the stars, the observatory mm. can trace ley lines and, and can find concentrations of magical energy that exist within the world. The Octonwald has always had a significant amount of, for lack of a better term, magical noise in the, in the, in the respect that there's a lot of magic in the Octonwald. And so what makes operating the tower challenging is that there's a, a signal to noise ratio that is somewhat difficult to parse through. In the past, in the past couple of years when you've been here, your primary objective as well was, again, to search for traces of delirium or for oddities. And the fact of the matter is, before you were here, you kind of viewed this as a kind of bad gig. So you spent more of your time communing with Bruce than actually operating the tower properly. I also do a lot of pictures of birds. There's a lot of bird pictures mm -hmm. in the... I'm really into animals, and there's a lot of birds Whoa. and small animal drawings littered throughout the tower. Okay. Why? Did you bird watching? Yeah. You're a birder. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite bird? The flat-chested, red-headed, peeking... It's a good one. <laughs> yeah. I, too, am a fan of the flat-chested, red-headed peeking. We have lots of them here in Tierhaven. Can you do the call? Coo -coo -coo. Coo -coo -coo. Amazing. It's a simple call, but it's so nice to meet someone. So I like nice. ducks. <laughs> Quack. They're great. Quack. Well, 
Yeah, I really didn't take my gig seriously. I so, can tell. Until, uh, until you approached me with the, uh, the news of um, that man that you eventually decapitated. The, the, the Hurlicks. Was. <laughs> Our favorite family, farmers out on the outskirts, yes. Yeah. Great friends of ours for years, yes. Right. Yes, the yeah. you murdered them. They you murdered them in matter of moments. You made a very split-second decision and just chopped his head It off. wasn't really him, so... <laughs> Yes, your ability to differentiate that is staggering. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You really, really just knew. Just hope that when your time comes, then... <laughs> when my time comes. Listen, we're going to you use Rath's to... <laughs> observatory to track Trithesia and then head out into the Octonwald. I can follow the the trail of those who went before. We should probably us. move quickly too, if if that letter is six weeks six behind, weeks. and that was when he, they wrote it. Um, they might have left shortly after. They could be, they're deep into the forest now. Mm. I agree. Let's, let's head to the observatory and see if we can find any clues. As you travel through Tierhaven towards the, uh, rocky road that leads up to the observatory, you can each roll me a d6. Three. Three. One. Okay. <laughs> As you I'm head across <laughs> town, a burly man with a round beard and an equally round belly, thick bushy eyebrows, wearing a stained red cape and carrying an axe of his own, comes up to you. Rudy, you recognize this man. This is Otto Storch, mm-hmm. the local butcher. And Otto comes up and says, Well, a lot of nerve showing up back here again, Whitaker. I'll have you know, in your absence, I've been appointed the new sheriff, Tierhaven. And he display, reaches under his beard and displays the badge to, to you. Uh, well, Otto, I'm, I'm glad we have someone looking after the, the people here, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm, while I've been off serving the new king of Drakenheim, um, I'm glad that we've had some authority in town. We all would know him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Does, do the people in Tear, Tearhaven know I'm king? Well, you'd be learning that now. Yep. Uh, um, <laughs> Fair. I point, but I don't know if he had quite got like the he head nod. He says, ah, Wilhelm, I've been needing a deputy for a while. You coming back to live in town? No. Huh. Who needs you anyways? Uh, I have much more important business to attend to than... I mean, I, I imagine that Wilhelm and Otto, the way that I'm already picturing it is that we didn't necessarily like each other much, but maybe we did. I don't know. Sure. Um, <laughs> you just don't like him. I don't like him. Maybe he likes me. I don't know. <laughs> Otto, I've... You got to know him. I, I've been traveling with Rudy for some time. We have very important business that we're attending to, much greater than being the deputy of Tierhaven, unfortunately. Well, don't go causing any trouble. Had enough trouble around here. What kind of trouble, Tr- Otto? Trouble. All kinds of trouble. Kinds of trouble that you two were responsible for. We were the ones that had to clean up the Hurlick farm after you left. Um. What? I, I guess we kind of just left everything there. Didn't um, the Academy come and clean it up? I mean, there was delirium and stuff. You sent to the Academy to clean it up, right? Who do you think had to tell Ooh, their relatives funny. what happened? Who do you think had to put all the repairs up on the farm after those wizards came and picked the whole place clean? Hmm. Okay, so you did. I mean, you're right. We did leave in quite a hurry. And then you missed this year's duck festival. That was a debacle. Uh, Was there another gnome wizard? Yes. Oh no, he (laughs) came back? He did. I'm sorry. Uh, But I'm sure... A 
sheriff as prestigious as yourself, uh, with your shining reputation in town, was able to take care of it in far better than Rudy and I had in the past. I mean... That trifling gnome made off with all the ducks in town. <gasps> there are no ducks in Tearhaven anymore. No. No ducks? <laughs> but Pa's on our current mission. We need to go get the ducks. I just but feel the like... duck festival. <laughs> That's gone. Never happening again now. All the ducks are gone. This is way bigger than ducks. Wait, this is as big as... This is ducks. Ducks are bigger than this. <laughs> I've been doing my best, but lots of people here in Tearhaven say that you abandoned us, Rudy. Things have been real rough around here. I'm just trying to pick up the pieces of the mess you left behind. We're really disappointed, Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I, listen, Otto, I had my reasons. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you did. Saving. Trucking off with your whole family, just leaving in the middle of the day without even saying goodbye to anybody. I'm not with my family, Otto. They're gone because someone was going to so kidnap So you abandoned them. your family, too. <laughs> no, uh, I didn't. Can't say I'm surprised. Excuse me? Rudy is the greatest mother, grandmother, sheriff, and anything else that this town has ever seen, I mean, Otto. I, I try my best. I wouldn't say I'm the, the best. The best. <laughs> she is a warrior, a soldier, a mother, grandmother. She is everything to this town, and you will show her respect. <laughs> Make an intimidation check. Okay. While Rudy's in a corner, just... <laughs> No, I'm not proficient, meaning I get a 16. Ooh. Mildly intimidating. Bold words from a little man. This little man is next in line to be King of Westamar, and you will show respect to me and my entire entourage. Ooh. <laughs> Give me another intimidation check with advantage. 19. You're... You're you're serious. I, I thought I thought that was a joke, but you're 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 serious. Oh, your Majesty! <laughs> <laughs> I beg forgiveness. Please don't behead me. Otto, it's okay. I just need you to know that Rudy left because we were called on very important missions for the betterment of Westamar. I'm sure it's true, Your Majesty. I am your humble servant. Please don't behead me. He, he, he won't even, like, look at you now. Uh, with, a, with a little bit of slyness, because Otto, Otto, I, Otto used to be, like, boisterous enough, and I used to be quiet enough that, like, he kind of would walk all over me in conversation. So, uh, finding a little bit of enjoyment in this moment, I'm like, Rudy, you, you have your axe ready, right? Always. <gasps> She's the chief executioner. No! <laughs> Tell my wife and kids I love that. <laughs> you saw what happened to the Herlick farm. The butcher. Oh, that's actually terrible. That's, that's terrible. That's not something I should say. Uh, your Majesty. <laughs> no. Your Majesty, if I may, Otto might um, seek redemption in your eyes. I your eye <laughs> by maybe giving us some much needed information about those that passed through town most recently. Absolutely. Otto, um, maybe you could grovel a little more and <laughs> share what you know with the future His face king. has turned red as like tears are pouring <laughs> down his flabby cheeks and into his beard. And he's one of those people that when he cries, like snot pours out of his nose. And it's on his beard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in and lift him up, kind of by his arm, and say, "Otto, let's go get a drink, and you can tell us what you know." And I kind of push him towards the closest tap house. All right. For would, you, of, would you like to go to the Dewdrop Tap House or the Wayward Public House? Um, Dewdrop. Is it I, what? Is I what prefer the Dewdrop. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's the, I think it's the closest. Anything to avoid Danforth Little. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, the Dewdrop Tap House lies at one of the, the two ends leading out of town. Um, and it is run by 
Bart or Portman, mm. who br brews the best beer in town. It's the only beer that's brewed in town. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a little bit more gruff than the Wayward Public House. Um, and hunting trophies hang on the walls. There's old bar stools that line the dark wooden bar, and the whole place smells of ale and musky wood. And and as you uh, go into the the tavern, the it's one of those places where it's a it's a big long house, and you kind of step down steps in into it, and the rafters up above are hanging down, and there's the the bar that is really just several large casks that have a plank of wood. Put across, uh, put across them, and uh, Bart Orman wearing an apron. He's a, he's a he's a balding man wearing an apron. He says, "Well, there we go, Rudy Whitaker, back in town with well, your Majesty. I've heard the rumors, and uh, I forget what your name is, but I know you're a weird Academy kid. <laughs> that is all you must know." That's Rath. He's uh, part of our journeying crew. Uh, and uh, he says, Otto, you okay? You've been chopping onions again? And uh, so he goes, four, four pints. Bart. <laughs> and I kind of guide him to one of the seats and kind of yeah. sit him down. And Bart comes by with uh, the the mugs. Uh, they're, they're wooden mugs that look like little barrels. With a, with a little wooden handle, and they're frothing with the beer, and he puts the, the beer down for, for each of you. You know, I miss it. Long live the king. <sighs> All right, Otto. You said there's been trouble, ducks and such, but what's been going on? Well, your boy, he, uh, he came, he was in town a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Came with a whole little entourage up from the university. Stayed at your place. Uh, came with two wagons. There were uh, there uh, there were two. The, the the one man actually spent some time over with Flamekeeper Katrin uh, for for a little while. Uh, the the and and Bart says, oh yeah, and that that woman uh, she. I, I think she went over to the Dewdrop because she needed the spilled, distilled spirits and, and some oils. She was brewing up something, I think. She came by here, but all I got, of course, is the beer. <laughs> mm. Needed something a little bit more refined, I guess. Bart says, Otto, I think there were five or six others with, with Corbin. So there was about maybe, maybe ten of them? All said? Ten total? Yeah, they, they, uh... Well, actually, well, here, here, here was the thing. They, they went up over to... When they came, they had some drinks here. And, uh, Bart says, Well, you... Apparently they were expecting a few others, a few other friends to come in a few weeks. And they left, uh, out lockbox and a couple letters with me those friends ever come yeah they, they they did they they came a few a few weeks ago they collected the 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 letters i think there was a map of the forest with, with it and then they left did uh did any of these friends that came by afterwards uh, if they stopped here what were you just to assume that you were looking for friends or were names given well they they said they gave their names Urian Muller and Lizanne Bean were the ones who left the letter, and they said that I was to give the letters to Joanna Veers and Anton Young, and that they would have a letter from Altbrook University. They came, they presented it, and I gave it to them. And uh, anything along the lines of uh, Everett Freed? That name sound familiar? Name doesn't ring a bell, but there were two, well, three others that came only a few days ahead, ahead of you both. And they were asking about the others. And I, I said, I knew that they'd been in town. They, they went up to the observatory and then they left. Mm. And did one of them, um, maybe we can describe, uh, I guess you guys. Otto's Freed? still crying in his beer. Bart, Bart says, well, the three that yeah. came, the, the, the three of them that came, there was a, 
a, a rather well, a rather somber looking woman and he gives a description and you realize that the description is consistent with the um, with the appearance of Cena Rings. Okay. Mm. There was another man that it looked like he'd been Something rough had happened to him. His whole face was covered in bandages. Mm. And then there was a y- another young man who was very strapping looking. Um, wh- a- a- and he looked like in great health. That could have been... Um, Christoph? Christoph, uh, from the reports. from Christoph the Christoph or Christoph with someone else? Well, from the reports, Christoph him. had a fr- freed inside of him. Yeah, but I'm wondering if the guy with the bandages was we gave Freed back his body. Right. Yeah, and and it, it, that could have been Freed, and it could have been one of the. Now those they... three, they had a big covered wagon mm-hmm. with them, as mm-hmm. well. How how big? It was pretty pretty huge. I think you could stay overnight in it. It was so big. Maybe the Duchess sleepover. <laughs> Um, this might sound like an out-of-place question. Uh, how close did you get to the wagon? Oh, it just parked outside. Um, it smelled weird. I was that's, say. That was <laughs> yeah. going to be my yeah. question. Uh, if I were to say <clears throat> ocean. No, no, not at all. I actually smelled more like death. <laughs> ocean, death the ocean, death. like dead fish or dead, dead, dead cattle? No, like it was like, like a corpse cart. Mm. It probably was. Mm. The, the no, the, the, I don't know. It didn't smell like a hint of fish. The roads leading out of Tierhaven, which could accommodate such a large wagon that goes into the forest. Nothing. Uh, that's what I thought. And they didn't show anything pulling the cart or just regular horses. I mean, the the first group that came, they had they had carts and horses too, and they were going into the depths of the forest. And everyone was talking about it for weeks afterwards because taking a wagon wagons like those into the forest, they're not going to go very far with those. Mm-mm. Hmm. I mean, unless you have the creatures that Pluto and. Well, you 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 saw them. They were they were. Did you not describe them as monstrosities? Yeah, <coughs> they were. I mean, but if they didn't see nothing, I feel like that's the first thing we would have heard about. They could have been hiding in the shadows, but yeah, they, if they had any help, I mean, they do have magic. Rack, you should know the capabilities. <laughs> what about um, uh, at Alpbrook? They had a. Uh, issue with missing persons. Has anyone gone missing since those have arrived and left? Any unusual? I mean, a bunch of people have been moving out of town. But, uh, you know, and it's not uncommon for us to not hear from people that live out in some of the smaller orchards and cottages for for weeks at a time. So if anyone has gone missing since they've arrived, if they've been up to anything, it's within the window that we wouldn't have heard about it yet. Mm. Hey, you said that people... Uh, Think of how long it took us to realize anything was going wrong with the Hurlix. Mm. <laughs> it's true. Fair. Out here? Yeah. People go missing out all the time. Folks don't realize it for weeks afterwards. We do our best to look after each other, but, you know, with living so far away, living so dispersed, it, it, it's the nature of what goes on around here. Yep. Well, this is quite a bit of information, Mm. and um, this actually does help with the reason why we're in town. So, we are investigating these uh, apothecaries that came through town. We're hoping to uh, find out what they're up to. There's, um, Mm. There's some problematic behaviors happening at Altbrook. I mean, if it, if it helps, I mean, the second two that came, they, they stayed for a couple days. The Johanna Veers, something was real off about her appearance. You said something's off about her appearance. What would you say is off? Wasn't, it was like her face was like not the right shape. 
It was strange. Couldn't place it. But the but the the the, the man that she came with, some kind of doctor, he actually made a couple house calls and helped a couple of the sick kids out. This helped a couple of kids. What do you mean? Yeah, we well we had about. Uh, we, we we had about a chicken pox go through some of the kids in town recently and oh. came and took care of them. Like they're they're healthy, they're yeah. good. Could you tell us the families that were helped? Yeah, I, I, I'll let, let me give it a give it some thought. I'll, I'll have to remember who it was, but it but uh, but yeah, there there were there were a few. Uh, and when you saw Corbin a few weeks back, did he seem chipper? Oh, he, he was seem... beaming. Hmm, okay. He didn't seem off at all. No, he, he was he was showing the others all all around town, and some of the the younger ones uh, they came in here for for a brew, and they were talking about their studies. They were and they were having a great time. Mm. I, I think he's he's made some it look looked to me like he made some friends, and which was surprising for me because I thought Corbin no no offense Rudy, but he was always a quiet one. He is. He was. Well, I'm glad he's found some folks that he gets along with, but... <sighs> is there any other of them? Veers and Bandage Face? Any others that looked a bit off? I mean, the weirdest looking one was that Bandage Face fellow. Mm. He gave me the, the willies, between you and me. Mm. And the woman he was with, too, just... Come to think about it, I don't think they even paid for the bill. How'd that happen? Well, how much do they owe? I don't want anyone to short you, you know? I may not be the sheriff anymore here, but I uh, want to make sure the people here are taken care of. You know, come to think about it, I don't even remember how much they spent. Well, um, I'm sure they couldn't spend more than a few gold, so here's three gold. Thank you. That is a crime, and we will see justice dealt to them. For the this. executioner will catch up with them. <laughs> I pulled on my ass. Like, Start Don't shopping. worry. <laughs> we'll get your gold. Um, finishing your 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 bruise. Where where would you like to head to next? Um, I am very, much more confident that the observatory is plundered. Uh, now that many sets of individuals have likely gained access. Um, we can head there and see if maybe they've left any type of trail. We've been gone for like a year and the Academy didn't think to send anybody to check on the observatory. They, they just... may have, but I mean, if this is all recent. When you left, the Academy did leave the place arcane locked. Oh, that'll do it. Nobody could have gotten in. <laughs> yeah, no one can ever break an arcane lock. Um, was... And if, if this is nothing, we can probably glaze over it, but the... the children that were helped by the apothecary. If I go and canvas the families to see if there were any side effects or... Children seem fine. Mm. Seem in perfect health. They actually help them. That's nice. Well, nothing unusual there. So I imagine that like as we leave the bar because it's... One of the parents comments though that the that the man was very excited that the, 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 the man actually took... She notes he, he was very friendly very helpful but he did, I think he bottled up some of the, the, the pus and, and the snot of my kids. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> he said he wanted to analyze it so that he could make it better. Like make it, like the chicken box better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an amused chicken box for me. Oh gosh. I mean, it's nasty. He's, he's I mean. It's the first. Like so itchy. Disease warfare. Yeah. I guess yeah. We've never seen this sort of thing before, so I have no idea what he would use chicken pox for. That seems maybe he's just a weirdo. Hmm. It would explain the smell. <laughs> it's entirely unsanitary. And rule number forty-nine: cleanliness is next to godliness. Hmm. I don't think he has a god. That's what I tell my. I feel like you got that rule from me. I'm just saying. <laughs> yes. Well, no, I got it from my dad, but I. <laughs> used yeah. it more, more specifically this book <laughs> this book <laughs> from my father um, it's a big part of it <laughs> rudy don't try to take credit for the rules that were written i'm years taking credit before. for that one <laughs> okay uh, you know you embody how that old rule would your father be at this point very well 
You didn't know my. Wait, you did know my father. <laughs> you fought with him in the war. <laughs> Maybe you are the she one. She kept saying it to him, and he was like, "I gotta write that down." <laughs> it's very unlikely that Rudy would have met met your father. It was passed along through the, <laughs> through the ranks. Side. Okay, yeah. you know what, Rudy? Sure. <laughs> You taught my father that cleanliness is next to godliness, and he has now imparted that knowledge unto me. And when I moved into your home, I saw it in living reality there. Yeah. Ah. Shall we away to the observatory? Um, yeah, one more observation, though, is that they said it wasn't fishy smelling, that cart. Yeah. I'm wondering what they're doing collecting bodies or something or bringing bodies along the way it might not be the duchess it might actually be corpses well then where is the duchess's body you may have defeated or may have been mm. left at the uh at albrook maybe the duchess might also be too large to to travel with they may have they may be in search of the the dragon but why would they bring the Duchess to the middle of the forest? That is true. Yeah, I don't think they would. I, I think you're right, though. The bodies. I think it would be just a collection to continue their experiments. It mm -hmm. might be the way that they that they create their magic. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I think we should head to the observatory. All right. Let's I am go. homesick. Well, we're home. Great. I... <laughs> Fondly look to the observatory. That is not a windmill. Yeah. <laughs> I Why thought would the, you ever think this is I a windmill? I thought that the arms of the windmill had fallen off years before I arrived here and it was just an okay. old husk. <sighs> there is just a husk. The cliff that overlooks Tierhaven forms a small rocky plateau that looks out over the forest. And so there is this narrow rocky path that one must navigate up the the crag towards it and then there's kind of this wooded plateau that that the observatory rests upon the tower's stonework consists of alternating bands of smooth and rough cut stone presenting an organic yet orderly fa facade and there are the traces of runes etched in silver along the edge of the tower each um, a masterpiece that glimmers under the the right light of the sun and the moon depending on the time of day most of the tower only has very narrow windows that have this latticed framework of interwoven branches that make it very difficult to see into the tower from the outside the tower has first a parapet sort of, sort of its own battlement and balcony and then a smaller section of tower rises out above it, as you can see. And dominating the tower's roof is a magnificent artifact. It is a magical iris crafted from polished brass and flawless crystal supported by a complex structure of gears, lenses, and revolving parts. So that piece actually, when it's in operation, it rotates and can pan and tilt and, and look up. So the sort of the pincers that it forms of, of, the, of the, the two plates and the glass lens at the middle are directed almost like this towards what they need, what section of the sky you would have it looking at. Have I ever seen this work since I've been here? Um, <laughs> since he's been here? <laughs> you, it's never moved. <laughs> the last time you saw this move would have been probably before the Civil War. Mm, okay. Interesting. Right? But as you tra <laughs> travel up, some of the locals mentioned that, yeah, they saw it moving twice in the past two weeks. Twice. No one knows Sorry, three moved. times three in the times. past two weeks. That's not good. I never, I didn't even notice that up there. Yeah, I have to like, yeah, I have to go check my manual. Yeah. yeah. The set of stairs of Hewn Rock I don't know how it works. Um, lead up to the entrance, Figured which out is a heavy arched door of ancient oak, banded with iron and adorned with magical sigils. Mm. And what you can see is that the magical sigils that are in the door are supposed to be filled with silver and mercury. Mm. And all of this, the metal in the sigils has been melted out and 
revealing that the magical wards had been disarmed. Were there other wards other than the arcane lock? There would have been, Wrath would have known that there actually would have been an explosive runes and an alarm spell cast on this by, probably by a river. But give me an arcana check. Uh, 23. Somebody competent undid these wards. You said it's magically locked, so Mm -hmm. we're good. Someone has clearly broken in. Mm -hmm. With that to check my result, the traces of the magic used to do this, you can tell that it's almost as if a priest of the sacred flame banished these wards, or someone invoked divine, uh, almost divine magic to break these wards. How is this possible, Raph? Uh, well, I mean... Magic is complicated. Urian Miller was interested in uh, the sacred flame and history. Who knows what kind of magic he's chosen to wield? It would have been much... It would have been powerful, too. River is a competent mage. Hmm. So... Whatever they've stumbled upon, whatever they are dealing with, it is of a level I did not expect of them. Mm. Well, I mean, from my experience with them so far, it's be on your guard because they do come in unexpected with these kind of things. From um, your description of the ongoings below the university, I think it's best that we expect uh, a much more capable foe Rule number three is never underestimate your foe, and I think the mistake that Sebastian made was that this foe was not one that we were prepared to fight Mm. at all. We didn't even know there was magic afoot here, but we need to be ready for anything. It's a mistake we all made. How would you like to proceed? Is there anything else you'd like to investigate before you enter? Um, just taking a quick glance around the outside, I I noticed that there's like, I don't know if this is representative, but I noticed there's like barrels, crates. Mm -hmm. Um, do these look like they are Wrath's barrels and crates, or are there supplies that were brought in, or where was anything recently tampered with? Give me an investigation check. They're completely ornamental. It's only been a few days since, uh, the other Oh, that's gonna be a 21. There is evidence of a lot of recent movement up and down these steps, but examining the supplies and provisions that have been left out, there's a stack of wood, and most of the supplies that are outside are more of an outdoor maintenance sort of sort of type. Things that would be used to just monitor the building. Um, several several crates of uh, of hay bags uh, like sandbags and old grain. Um, but nothing has been, in, in fact, many of them are collecting a little bit of moss from not being used. Like the stack of wood outside actually has a lot of moss growing in, into it because no one has been bringing back fresh wood to use it in, in, in here. Um, what it does look like is that several of the crates were ripped apart possibly to use this firewood. There's mm-hmm. firewood right there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Rudy, you can give me a perception check. Mm. Uh, 18. Okay. Wrath, you can do one, and so can Wilhelm. 20. 21. You hear a pained groan from inside. We killed... <laughs> Continue. The, the boy. <laughs> who was large. The large boy. Yes, Horace was killed. He's not still in there, is he? The oh, large... No, Horace's body was... Okay. Oh, yeah! The Academy would have taken care of yeah. that. 
That was a um, year, like a year and a half ago. I heard a groan in your observatory, and I had a flashback to the last time there were groans yeah. in your you know observatory, what? and I only fought large boy, large hurlic boy. Let me quickly just send Houdini in. I have an idea too. Okay, the the arcane. You need to open the door, or and the windows with their lattice work. You need to break the window for Houdini to get it. I think. Do you have an idea? Well, the knowing that the the, the lock is disabled, the magic has been disarmed. Does knowing what I know about the tower, does that also apply to the upper portions of the tower? So is it like one continuous system, or are they separately? It's possible that. They There's, could have existed upstairs, but not down. Or? Yes, they they could have been separate. Yes, I could get us up above. I just do not know. I do not know if it's. Do we just go in the front door? Let's just go in the front door. I was just gonna kind of <laughs> open the door. Sure. Okay, <laughs> Rudy, you open the front door. I'm gonna yeah have my axe ready, and I kind of <laughs> okay push the door open. I have my hands up, <laughs> ready to shield my face. That's my knee. Put that floor there, and this floor there. This way, we've got all three floors available to us. What's should we need them? Top, bottom, middle, top, okay. and then we'll we'll if we have to go up here, we'll go up here. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I, I didn't. I, I didn't mean to open it earlier, but there, there's the. Well, I think we just opened it. Now we opened it. Okay. The painting. Sorry, night. Oh, and. Uh, oh yeah, you got me. Please yeah. add some debris. Ooh. Here. To the bottom floor. Is it uh, like? Raph can do that. Cost about. Yes. My house. And you can <laughs> add some debris to the middle floor. <laughs> and you can add this debris to the topmost floor. Just debris. Just scattered around. Here's here's some more scatter stuff. Let's throw that somewhere. What a mess. I'm gonna block the stairs. Cause why not? Oh no. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> that's 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 big. Do it. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The first floor. Who knocked over my bookcase? Lies in disarray. The bookshelves have been pillaged. Their treasures and knowledge strewn about. Mm -hmm. The old books and scrolls lie discarded on the floor. Immediate evidence of a frantic, indiscriminate search. Where once a warm fireplace cracked invitingly, now only ash and charred wood remain. A sturdy rune-carved oak table and its accompanying chairs stand in the middle of the room, um, but their cushions have even been torn open. Along the wall, a spiral staircase ascends to the next floor. As you crack open the door to this room and the evening light spills into the darkness, three hunched figures rise up in the darkness. They are familiar in appearance to you, Rudy. With plated armor covering their bodies and helmets placed over their heads, allowing a singular delirium crystal lens in the center and claw-like arms shaped into blades, three of Everett Freed's reanimated constructs stand in the room growling lowly, their exposed and open jaws hanging with massive molar light like teeth as they spring to attack. Mm. Ah. Roll for initiative. Oh no. Oh gosh. This is our first time seeing this. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Oh. They're awful. 27. 27 for Wilhelm. Three for Rudy. Like a natural one. And uh, 12 for Wrath. Just opening the door, you know. 
Okay. Take some time. <laughs> As the door cracks open, place Rudy in the door. Okay. Because she would have opened it. Yeah. And yeah. Great. And then with Wilhelm and Rath behind. Okay. Wilhelm, you see these creatures, mm -hmm. and you are the first to act. All right. And do we have Bruce in there as well? Yeah, uh, Bruce is, yeah, beside me here. Great. And Houdini's around. Um, put, him on, put him on the boxes there. Rushing past Rudy. Okay, you slip past Rudy. As as I see the, uh, the three creatures that I, I move in to defend, the first one in the room, this is a very crowded room right now. It is. Um, in so, fact, we'll, ha we'll count the whole room as difficult ground, so half speed. Mm. So I squeeze past crowded. Rudy, <laughs> and I'm like, let's take these out quickly, and I pull out my moon-touched rapier, and the first one on Rudy's uh, right, as I come in, who's lunging towards her, I... Uh, duck and stab upwards towards it in an attempt to take it out quickly. Okay. Uh, getting a 23 to hit. Your weapon pierces through the armored shell that has been bolted to its body. Um, and as you get a closer look at it, you can see how the flesh is red and weeping as the metal, where the metal has been bolted onto it. Um... Does, I, I kind of moved into the room, but is there any way I get advantage with, or not advantage, no advantage sneak attack? but I think that you, I'll... Like, it's kind of complicated in there. There's not really room for me to go if I'm there. Yeah, sure. Sure. I'll allow it. Stab him. My sneak attack right now is a lot. I think it went up. Let me just see what we're at here. Eight. Ooh. Wow. That's a fireball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you fireball him in the back. So I, as as he lunges towards Rudy, I like sneak in under his his weapon, getting him right under the rib cage. Uh, thirty nine damage. As your blade punctures the guts of this creature, and you pull the blade back out, a stream of blackened ichor spills out from it. And though it is clearly damaged, the unfeeling creature doesn't even flinch at the wound. Um, as a bonus action, I pull out my crossbow and point blank, I like grab it by the shoulder and just like fire the crossbow, like trying to like get it in the mouth. Cool. Um, uh, critting. Woo! 19 more damage. Okay. Firing the crossbow right into the creature's mouth, the bolt bursts out the back of the creature's head, no. sending gray matter splattering across the wall. The creature stumbles for a moment and then writes itself as if it doesn't even need a brain to continue functioning. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just destroyed that guy. What? That's that's my turn. It's its turn. Oh no! It lowers its gaze down on you, uh -oh. and it brings up one of its arms. So the, these things basically, one of their arms is, essentially they have their hands, and then these scimitar-like blades have been added to their forearms, and it comes down right on you, Wilhelm, and it grabs you by the hair. Ah, oh, my hair. <laughs> uh, getting a. 18 to hit. No. Okay. My armored hair reflects his hair. It reaches down again, getting a 22 to hit. Yes. So it places its two hands on your head, uh -oh. and it takes you, and it pulling you by the hair, it throws you into the wall. Oh. You, you take 17 slashing damage, and I need a strength saving throw. One. You are thrown five feet, so he basically throws you into the corner of the room, and you're knocked prone. In front of the fire. And place. then, as you, as you fall prone, basically the arm blades like extend forward. Uh oh. Whooshing, I underestimated and it my phone. Dives right into you, going. Ah! And with advantage. Uh oh. 
it gets a 27 to hit. Yeah, that'll... <laughs> the blades pierce into you for 23 piercing damage. Um, and you are trapped in the grip of this creature. You are grappled and restrained. Well, yeah, there's blades in my <laughs> yeah, chest. Yeah. As it's pinned you up against the wall. Uh, Blood is coming out of my mouth. Another and... lunges straight towards Rudy. It makes two attacks against Rudy, getting two 19s on the dice. So I get a 29 and a 29. Yeah, yeah. Shield isn't going to do nothing. It bowls in, into you oh. for a total of uh, 34 slashing damage. And I need two strength saving throws. Uh, Fourteen. Okay. And... Fourteen. It throws you ten feet back. <laughs> oh no! Out the door. <laughs> out the door. And then leaps forward onto you again. It jumps in the air and the blades extend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing up the getting door. Getting a twenty reading it thrown out the door. Shield! As it lands as it comes to land down on you, you throw up the shield and it's deflected off, and it still pounds against the magical force. The last one sees Wrath, and it uses its bonus action to aggressively dash towards Wrath and make two attacks. The first attack is a 12. The second one is a 22. The 22 hits. 17 yeah, bludgeoning hit. damage, yeah. and um, I need oh. a strength save. Oh, no. <laughs> I get a 10. You fail. It <laughs> grabs you and it throws you into the room. Oh, no. You land prone, and then it turns around and it does the same thing. Leaps into the air. Okay, so its first attack at me on the ground, I'm gonna use entropic ward. So I'm gonna invoke disadvantage. Okay, so that cancels the advantage from the fact that you're prone. Yeah. So that it gets a twelve. Woo! So the Entropic Ward, you're able to roll out of the way as its blades crash down into the ground in front of you. Ah! <laughs> Ready? <laughs> I'm dealing with my own over here. With that, Wrath, it is your turn. I look into the creature's faceplate. Yeah. And I begin to whisper into whatever soul it may have. And I'm going to cast dominate monster. Okay. I have some very bad news for you. Oh. <laughs> As you whisper into whatever mind that this creature has, you find nothing. It is immune to the charm condition. Okay. Okay. So uh, does dominate require you require them to be charmed? Oh yeah. It's definitely a charmery. Charmy charm charm. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, then I stand up. <laughs> sorry, your big new fancy eighth level spell. I hate, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. I, I stand up and um, uh, let's see what other bonus actions I have. Yeah. You can tell from this, these creatures cannot be charmed and they cannot be frightened. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever has, whatever has happened to them, their gray matter is not necessary for them to function, leaving them utterly without mercy or fear. Okay, that is uh, that is my turn. Rudy, we're over to you. Mm, uh, so I'm gonna stand up wherever I'm you're, at. You're down here. Yeah. Is there one in front of me? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Houdini. <laughs> Get over here! Um, so I get Houdini to fly over and, and help. And I'm gonna take some wax! Okay, um... 16 to hit. It bounces, uh, the, your axe crashes against the armored plate of, the, of this creature, but doesn't puncture Ooh, through it. Ooh, okay, let's see. The less than that. Oh, okay, um... 23 to hit. Finally, battering down through the armor of this creature, your third blow finally cracks through the armor. 20 damage. Okay, for 20 damage. Mm. The blade comes back and just bile 
flows out, out of the wound, the creature doesn't even flinch from the blow. Hmm. That is, that is it. That's what we're doing. All right. We go back to the top with Wilhelm. Oh, man. Uh, trying to find what causes these creatures to operate, I, I stop focusing on the head. I'm pinned against the wall right now, and I just start driving my blade over and over again. So you are restrained, so you have disadvantage unless you'd like to try to escape. I'm going to... Roll with disadvantage. Okay. So you will not be able to sneak attack. I get a 13. This creature bearing down on you, you can barely even get to your weapon with with it pinning you against the wall like this. Okay. Someone's in my tower. <laughs> I'm realizing that now. Um... Yeah, these guys. And you. <laughs> and me now. I was outside the tower, and then I was suddenly inside. I I think that's all I can do. Yeah, this is a... Uh-oh. Bonus action. I mean, I can't disengage. You can still try to shoot it with disadvantage. Eh, let's, let's try. So... Not being able, I'm, I'm reaching for my sword, but I can't pull it out because it's too clouded. Yeah. So I try to take the crossbow and like point it upwards. Han Solo. Yeah. Uh, getting a 14. The crossbow shot just ricochets across the other side of the So I, Yeah, I'm pinned there and I shoot and it's psh. Oh no. Imagine it goes to her like rat's mohawk. Yeah. <laughs> the creatures. Oh god. The oh, first no. one. <laughs> rips into Wilhelm with advantage. The first hit is actually a 19. No. The second hit uh, is a 28. Yes. And the third hit is a 29. Yes. It's a total of 40 damage across the two attacks. Oh, God. Basically, I mean, I now that it has you pinned, it, it, the, it takes one of the pinning blades and just pulls back and just stabs you in the stomach three times. Ooh. Uh, yeah, there's blood pouring out of my mouth. I'm oh no, fairly... no. I'm being assassinated. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rudy, Rudy, <laughs> we're failing. <laughs> Why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> All my friends are dying. <laughs> Rudy. I attack you once for a 19 to hit. Shield! Okay, and a 26 to hit? Yeah, it is. Okay, I need a strength saving throw. Oh, classic. Second, second. Um, let me just mark off my shield. I marked off the wrong one. Strength? Mm -hmm. 21. You are not knocked prone, so it cannot use... It, it looks like these creatures, you need to be knocked prone in order for them to use their entrapping rend on you. Mm -hmm. Wrath, I get two attacks against you. Yep. The first one is a 23. Oh yeah. Strength save. Uh-oh. Uh, I get an eight. Okay, you are knocked prone, and it it throws you against the bookshelf, <laughs> bounds across, and it basically does the same thing to you as it did to Wilhelm, uh -huh. pins you up against the wall. So in total, you take 40 damage this turn, and you are restrained in its grip as well. And is it all psychic-y? Uh, it's all physical damage. Or all physical damage? Yeah. All slashy, slashy, yeah. slashy? Okay. Yeah. It's just horrifically violent slashing damage. <laughs> Monty, remind me how much damage I got? Uh, 40 uh, for you as well. Okay. Yep. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I love these monsters. They're great. Who made them? <laughs> oh, they're so violent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're all gonna die. No. No. Okay. Wrath, it's your turn. I, in my moment of, as I feel the weight of this thing pinning me to the, to the wall, I reach out and I call upon Bruce and I summon the thing with the waving tail. Nice. I summon Bruce from the dream world 
from the place between worlds to come and attack this creature. So, and can Bruce act on my turn? Bruce acts immediately after you, yeah. So he's going to pounce on this thing as as it's pinning me. He, he just comes out of like this, like, almost like this rift, like you can see like- A kind of spectral cat door emerging <laughs> and a chorus of meows <laughs> heralds the arrival of you, Bruce. And he's going to <laughs> jump at this creature, yeah, and uh, um, he's gonna make uh, two attacks. Oh, uh, half the spells level rounded down. So I cast at a fifth level, so yeah, two attacks. So I crit, Woo! and I get a, let me just, I haven't used it in so long. Um, uh, does an, a 19 hit? Yes. Okay. So I crit and a 19. So the total damage, I'm going to do the first, the crit first. It's 11, 15, plus 30, 42 damage. Some of it is cold, if that matters. Okay. And then the, 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 the second hit is... Uh, Did you want to use the Thought Tendril or the Eldritch Hiss abilities? Can I... So can I... Like, is it just... I thought I could do, I could do two attacks? Or... or Eldritch Hiss or Thought Tendril. You want to do attacks? I guess you've rolled them already. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Next time I will. Um, okay. I'm gonna do. Uh, one, two, three. And then another twenty da nineteen damage. Sorry, nineteen. Damage. Okay. Uh, it is incredibly wounded as as the spectral form of Bruce rips into its body, but it's the this creature seems focused on you and un and still presses its attacks. Okay. And I stand up, uh, can I, uh, I guess he's still got me restrained though. Yeah, yeah, because you're restrained, you can't even stand up from prone. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. Ow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ow. Yeah. Um, okay. Rudy. I am going to Misty Step, mm -hmm. using my free Misty Step, uh, to the, the guy beside Wilhelm, who's mm -hmm. pinning him to the wall. Yeah, see if you can get me in there. Jam, um, jam in there. And I call Houdini over, and I am going to ah. take some wax at this guy. Let's see, what is wrong? Okay, um, 13. Uh, I'm afraid, this thing is pinned Wilhelm to the wall. You slash it right in the back, and the armored plate on its back, your axe just bounces off of it. Do better. Okay, that's better. Um, 21 to hit. It's a hit. And that is 22 damage. Okay, it is extremely wounded. One more. Uh, 24 to hit. It's a hit. Nice. Yeah, so this, the first attack cracks the armor, the second and third, you, just two massive slashes across its back. Damage? 22. 22? Okay, anything else? Is it still going? It's still going. I'm going to action surge! Okay. <laughs> and try to destroy it. We'll see. Uh, I crit. Yeah! Nice. Um, because you teleport with your action surge, did you want to not use Misty Step? Yeah. Okay. Can, can I do yeah. that? I'll I that. totally forgot yeah. I could do that. Um, oh, so if you action surge, you get to teleport, right? I yeah. get to teleport once. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's a new, new. Yep. Yeah. So you crit thing. this creature. I crit him. Um, okay, so that is. Nice. Um, 30 plus, where's my. Get too excited about this. Um, 35 damage. Okay. Your three attacks crash into the creature's spine, sending parts of its vertebrae flying apart. And the final blow bisects it right through the spine and it collapses. And you sort of realize that, that essentially the skeleton of this creature forms its brain. 
Um, so by ripping apart its spine, it has been dismantled enough to stop it from functioning. Your crit and your kill technically both trigger a bonus action attack, so you've actually got three more attacks to make. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Taking all my frustration about the situation, uh, what's going on with my son out on these guys, so um, I turn to the one near Wrath, and you see fire in my eyes, like, yes. I'm ready to take this oh, one out. Take him so off. let's see if I can do it. Uh, 17 to hit? Barely misses. Whoa! Yeah. Okay, let's try. A, a, a natural one on the die, so no, no. Uh, Kill so, it. Okay, that one, that one, that one's good. Finally, you find purchase in in the final attack. Again, you find that you have to sort of crack your way through the armor on the outside to get to the gooey center of these creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta crack them open like a chestnut. <laughs> and I uh, get twenty three damage on that one. Okay. It is still operational, but heavily damaged. Wilhelm, as the creature, f as, as you, in this last moment, the creature's like yelling right into your face and it's all, almost about to bite into you to rip your nose off as Rudy's ax just goes wham, 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 <laughs> and it falls away, the blade pulling out of your body with a huh. awful suckling noise, just like whoosh, and you are freed. I, 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 first I slump over with like the weight of it releasing and, and I'm there like bleeding on the ground, but I, I push myself up and I see her wailing on this other one that has wrath pen. <laughs> and I, I like slump my way over and I'm like, we're not done yet. And I, I, I move in between Rudy and this quantum cat monster that's, that's appeared here. And I just come up behind it and seeing the crack in the armor that, that Rudy's made, I'm gonna try to drive my blade cool. into into the open space in its armor. Uh, getting a uh, 17, not enough. Not enough. Um, with the with the blade not making purchase, I I I'm gonna I I guess I can't step back. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to shoot it. Okay. <clears throat> That's going to be a 24. That will hit, and you can sneak attack. Yeah. Nice. So, with the blade, you know, okay, actually, here's here's what happens. With the blade, I, um, I, like, jam it in and, like, pry the armor open a bit, and then I, like, aim my crossbow nice. light right yeah. at its spine. Uh, Twenty-three damage. The shot crashes, severs the its spinal column, and it collapses down on top of Wrath. <laughs> You're okay. There's still one left. I say, don't let your guard up. There's still one more. It, as you say that, it <laughs> races into the room and charges at Rudy. Its first attack is a twenty-four to hit. Yes, yeah, that hits. For 17 damage, and I need a strength save. 21. Okay, its second attack is an 18. Nope. The, two atta the, the first attack, it tries to throw you to the ground, unable to do so, can't pounce on you, so that's all it does. We now go to Wrath. Is it taking any damage? This, all of them, two of them are destroyed, and uh, the the oh, one remains. One hit. Oh. Has it taken any? It took a hit. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I have can I have a Bruce attack before my turn? You're, it goes immediately after you. Okay. Then uh, you can delay. You can ready an action to go off after it attacks, though. Yeah. So I want to ready finger of death, and then I want Bruce to attack, and then right after Bruce attacks. I do think technically readying a spell does break your concentration, but I'll allow it in this case. Oh, okay, I see what you're, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. No, that's okay, I can do, uh, I really want a robot. Well, how much damage does Finger of Death do? It's like, it, like in the 50s to 80s. This guy, I guess he only took one hit. Yeah, he, he, he looks untouched. 
Um, I'm gonna have. Uh, I'm gonna just try it. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try to finger of death him. Okay, go for it. Uh, so I need to make a saving throw, right? Um, you're gonna do con save uh, DC twenty one. Oh, that's high. <laughs> Uh, I get a 17. Okay. Come on. I just want one. Can I have uh, a bunch of D8s? Actually, I only need, uh, sorry, I need uh, four more. There you go. Okay. Uh, okay, so, uh, 61 necrotic damage. Wow. You... You, the flesh that composes this creature <laughs> almost melts off of it, leaving behind only the, the organs underneath and the, the last bits of connective tissue. It still functions in this state, though. Oh, no zombie. <laughs> no! Kill it! <laughs> All right, Bruce is going to um, maul it. Um, I, ooh, I only get a... Uh, Oh, it's my, uh, his claws, my spell attack modifier. So yeah. it's, uh, 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 a 17 and a 20. The 20 does hit. Okay. Uh, two, 13, 18 damage. Okay. I think at, at this point, Rudy and Wilhelm are acting both before it. I think with all of you on, on deck, you're able to rip this creature apart and it, it collapses, destroyed. Where did my fourth die go? <laughs> uh, did you give me four? Yeah. Yeah, I gave you four back, didn't I? You dropped Something one. Something dropped. Did and I then... Drop? Oh, I did. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> the room is quiet. <clears throat> uh, room turn. Well, boys, that's a little taste of what we've been uh, dealing with at the... Albrook University. No wonder Sebastian died. This is I'm <laughs> my <wonderful>. organs. <laughs> Sebastian actually dealt with these pretty well. Uh, just saying, it was the Duchess that that had the. I need a bandage. What are these things? And I'm gonna like pick up one of like the skulls, like uh, the face plates. It even still growls a little bit as you pick it up, and that is where we will end for the night. <sighs> Oh, gosh. Thank you, as always, to our incredible players, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, for playing. And a huge thank you to Kyle for all of the amazing work that he does behind the scenes. Woo! Thank you, Kyle. And a huge thank you to our Dungeon Master, Monty yeah. Martin, for running an incredible investigative <laughs> murder mystery. Uh, well, mystery, with us and almost getting murdered. Uh, thank you. It ended in us doing the murdering. <laughs> yeah, we, we survived and we murdered, so... We did it. We did it. Um, in our game tonight, we use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They have graciously given us permission to use them in our tabletop games, and we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. Uh, some terrain by Dwarven Forge, uh, including uh, miniatures by WizKids and Hero Forge, uh, music by Tabletop Audio, and player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts, including the Dusk Wardens, back Ooh. again. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an incredible Patreon community that supports the channel with their generosity every month. If you would like to help out the channel, make sure that we can continue to produce these live stream shows and join our amazing community, please follow the links in the description below. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons, where you can join us on Discord and chat with us about all things D&D, TTRPG, Drakenheim, anything else that you want. Uh, so come hang out on the Discord and join our writer's rooms, Q&As, and much more exciting stuff happening on there. We also got new videos dropping on the Dungeon Dudes YouTube channel all the time, so be sure to check that out if you're looking for guides for D&D 5e, whether you're a player or Dungeon Master. And be sure to join us next Tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in Drakenheim.